Welcome again to my kitchen, my study hall, if you will. Now, it seems that everyone wants to understand the end times these days. I do not blame them, for it draws near. All want to know what the mark of the beast is. Why are there two beasts? Who will be the man of perdition? What is the abomination that makes desolate? Where is Babylon? And who is the whore that rides upon the beast? Well, don't look at me for those answers today. However, excuse me a minute. Ah, yeah, get my heart back to normal rhythm again. There we go. Don't look at me for all those answers today. However, I will speak at this time about what all those things do have in common. And it is explained in the Bible, in the Holy Scriptures, and much more than I am aware of. You see, everything under the spirit of the Antichrist will speak blasphemy. They will scream blasphemy. They will have blasphemy written upon their heads. Blasphemy will in, be inside of them and in their crowns. Blasphemy is the one thing in common with all who stand against Christ. Now, I'm not talking about the, the non-believer that hasn't come to the understanding yet. I'm talking about all who stand against Christ. Before and now right up until the time that Christ appears again on earth. And so, in order that when the tribulation ramps up in this generation, wouldn't it be good to know beforehand what kinds of things to be looking for so that we have a greater understanding of the activities of the Antichrist? And understand who these beasts might be? Hmm. In order to understand that, we have to understand what they have in common. And that is blasphemy. So that we may know who and what blasphemies against God throughout time, even until, even to the altar and at the temple, in the temple, or, in Jesus' words, where it ought not be. I'm in prayer. I read from Deuteronomy 32, verses 1 through 4. Could be important someday. Give ear, all ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, as the grass showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord and ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth without iniquity, just and right is he. There are so many who believe, I'm leaving the scripture now and going to, there are so many who believe truly in you, O Lord, yet they live under the direction of the nation that blasphemies your holy name and in your holy name for how long O oh God how long before they are called out of her so that she can be made as was Nineveh Amen praise be to God 
For Jesus warned his church, you will know them by their fruits. Let's scatter my notes up here again. The first thing that uh, Bible pilgrims and students should be aware of concerning the blasphemy, the first and foremost is that it is revealed in, a, in the Bible. And we can begin with the first one that comes right from one of the eleven referred to as the Ten Commandments but there are eleven of them there if you look closely enough where it says that I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage and thou shalt have no other gods before me You see, having false gods or identities or even worship of the church could stand between you and God. It could interfere. You could believe so much in these other things that you don't hear God. They can be so close. They can be like your right hand and your left hand. But yet they're different hands. These things are false worship and blasphemy. Now then, you see, is there anywhere on earth now, right now, do we know of, any place uh, that promotes any other person, or even many people, uh, to stand outside of Christ, or between you and Christ? Well, of course there is. But let's narrow things down just a little bit more as we go along, because there are many worldly gods worshipped, and want and some of them even wanting to lope your head off and in the end times they will be there too number two of the eleven is thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or is in the earth beneath or that it is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Well now, do we see anywhere or anything or any nation on earth that might have processions that follow the ancient pagan sign of the golden sun or candles or statutes or other idols that is blasphemy too for blasphemy rule number two thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth, thou shalt not bow down to them in heaven. And I have to read this right from the scriptures. Nor serve them, for I, the Lord God, am a jealous God. Now, I'm not saying I'm God. I'm reading from the scriptures here. But, moving on. Moving on now. I think we got that one. That's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Well now, you know, we all at one point or another curse. And sometimes use the name of God when we smack our winky in a door with a hammer. Or smack it in a car door these things happen and generally very temporal and a mistake and being forgiven as forget as as confessed but is there any nation because I will go here now is there any nation on earth that has repeatedly attempted to change or adulterate God's law or his times 
or withhold the forgiveness of Christ, even if it be by excommunication, and saying there is no salvation outside this church, implicating that they do these things under God's providence. Is that not vanity? Blasphemy rule number three. I'm closing it up here. Thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord thy God in vain. Another of those eleven. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Six, day, six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In other words, who created it? And everybody said, Amen. Are we aware of any who have set aside a Sunday, the ancient pagan day of the sun, to be the Sabbath? When clearly the biblical Sabbath should be on Saturday. Do you remember who it was that appointed Sunday, the day of the sun, to become the Sabbath? Blasphemy rule number four. Keep the Sabbath holy. Now remember, we're talking the beasts, both of them, the whore that rides upon one of them, the horns, the heads, the head, they were all full of blasphemies. And the one is even known to be read, according to the scriptures, from the blood of the saints by their blasphemies. At least why that's something I think. Very predominant revelation coming up here. And it's one that not many people do know because not many people really have read for understanding these areas. They spend so much time in Revelation that they forget about these areas over here. Well, and Daniel. But a very prominent revelation concerning blasphemy is easy to be found in the canonized scriptures. And this is, this is a bad one here. It's in the Old, Te Old Testament found in uh, the book of Numbers, uh, verse 11. Verse 11 from the book of Numbers, where Moses said unto the people, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock. And because Moses said we, he placed himself to be as God. That is blasphemy. And also the reason Moses was not allowed to enter into the promised land. I and my Father are one, said Jesus, in the witness of John chapter 10, verse 30. I and my Father are one. And then the Jews took up the stone, the stones again to stone him. And Jesus answered them, Many good works I have showed you from my Father. For which of these good works do you stone me? And the Jews answered him and said, For good work we stone thee not. but for blasphemy. And because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. That's from John, chapter 10, 32, 33. Look it up, if you need to. Blasphemy rule number five. Any who places themselves to be in the place of God commits blasphemy.
But of course, Jesus was doing this because he was, you know, he is God. He has the power to do that. It belongs to him. But our acknowledgement must be that any who places themselves to be in the place of God, as Moses did, commits blasphemy. But he shall blas who whoop let's get my tongue back around here. Let me read it direct. But he that shall blasphemy against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Words of Jesus, Mark chapter 3, verse 29. Now, let's look next to Matthew chapter 9. Verses 2 and 3 for a yet another example of possible blasphemy. And behold, they brought unto him, in parentheses, Jesus, a man sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, a certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. Thereby we should learn from this about blasphemy that to forgive sins is an act of blasphemy. And now, of course, Jesus did these things to demonstrate his authority on earth. Now see Matthew chapter 9 verse 6, Mark chapter 2 verse uh, 10, and Luke chapter 5 24 for furtherance of this information. But Jesus the Christ has the authority to forgive all sins, not man, not pastors, not Mary, not bishops, not priests, not cardinals, nor even the Pope. Jesus the Christ alone can forgive all sins. Now it is right, however, that we forgive all trespasses one to another. Those things where, you know, I might have stolen some money from you or done something to them and uh, you know they're supposed to forgive me so to speak and, and the things that they did to me or anyone has done to me I'm supposed to forgive that really is a good way to do things and I'm not saying I still don't owe that money over here that I borrowed money from but <sighs> forgiveness is something that is good for our soul and that is something that we should do one to another. But the sins and the abridgments of the law or abominations against God are forgivable by Christ alone. Blasphemy rule number six. Only Jesus the Christ, the Lamb of God, the judge of this world, has the authority forgive all sins. Now next I have to do a tough one here. It's going to take several verses. It really is going to take several verses. We'll begin from the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 where it says and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with 
the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues, other tongues, they say, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now let's take a look at uh, the book of Acts, chapter 4, 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Yet while Peter spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Now let's backtrack. Same chapter, chapter 10 in the book of Acts, verses 34 and 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. That means it's all part of the salvation plan, all of the earth, everyone from every nation, etc., etc. It's all there. These are the kind of the conditions that Paul, that uh, Peter, is laying out. Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost can also be the holding of the knowledge of the Holy Ghost or gifts of the Spirit from another. Any manner or belief that denies Christ in this manner or any other manner is blasphemy. The denial of Christ is blasphemy. Now on an individual level this can be kind of the worst form of blasphemy because it is possible, not probable, but possible, that there be a loss of souls through confusion by refusing. Yeah, it could be through confusion. But there are churches today that deny the existence of the Holy Ghost outright. And they also deny that any individual can receive the Holy Ghost. And those that also teach that there is no salvation outside that church. And we cannot forget the congregation that wants to either change your religion or lop off your head if you're a believer in Christ. All such things deny Christ. All such things are blasphemy. In all the scripture verses that I have read beforehand, the Holy Gifts, the Holy Ghost, and all the gifts were given unto all true believers in Christ. They are not restricted nor empowered by any man or men. So, if you believe, or are in a, in a church that believes that, I'd be reading the Bible, spend a little more time. And that kind of brings us to blasphemy rule number seven. The withholding, the denying, the stifling of the knowledge of Christ and truth and his Holy Ghost is blasphemy. For it is by faith and the providence of God let no man be stand between you and that truth. Now it's time for a quick summary. And I say, hey, why not? <laughs> You've stayed here this long anyway. You might as well get a good summary out of the deal. So we have blasphemy rule number one. Have no other gods before me. One of the Ten Commandments. I, call, I refer to them as the Eleven. 
have any false gods or people or identities that stand between you and God, can even be inclusive to the worship of the church itself, is false worship, and false worship is blasphemy. Blasphemy rule number two. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, and shalt shall not bow down to them, and all that. You should not follow or bow down or worship or serve any image in any way. Blasphemy rule number three. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Attempting to change the things of God and saying it is under God's providence is blasphemy. You would be better off if you were an atheist. Wouldn't really make much difference. Blasphemy rule number four. Real simple, keep the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath holy. Blasphemy rule number five. Any who places themselves in the place of God, any who stand in the place of God, anyone who calls them the Holy See. Did I say that out loud? Commits blasphemy. Blasphemy rule number six. Only Jesus the Christ, the Lamb of God, the judge of this world, has the authority to forgive all sins. Anything less is blasphemy. Blasphemy rule number seven. The withholding, the denial, or the causing of denial, or the stifling of knowledge of truth is blasphemy. For it is by faith and the providence of God and is not controlled by or restricted by men. The Holy Ghost, the very Spirit of God, is the greatest teacher of all. And it rests with every true believer in Christ. Now I have declared seven biblical forms of blasphemy. There may be some others. I don't, I'm not all knowing and all seeing and don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. But, as so that any should try to understand the end times, know this. Both, there's two of them, of the beasts, the horror of Babylon who led so many astray. The man of perdition, the false prophet, the armies that want to lop off your head and attack the temple, as well as the force behind the abomination that makes desolate, all have one thing in common. And I've just given you seven of them. They all are blasphemy. They blaspheme, they are blasphemy, and all are of the Antichrist, the father of lies. And all these things are declared openly by the scriptures, so you may have a better understanding when you read the Bible looking for guidance and looking for guidance concerning the end times as well. For God does not do one thing that has not been foretold by his prophets. And why would he do that? And Jesus warned his church, you shall know them by their fruits. So have no fear of the coming tribulation because it was declared unto all beforehand that you might understand when it comes. And remember always that it is Jesus the Christ who shed his blood and died on that cross at Golgotha and then was raised from the dead three days later according to the scriptures, so that all who accept his sacrifice as to the will of God will be 
saved. This is also that his comforter, the comforter that comes from him, your teacher, your protector, the Holy Ghost, may bring you, brothers and sisters, perfected and faithfully to him. Tribulation or not. Amen.